day one for me, which is Wednesday or Thursday. Today's Thursday, so day two of Origins. We're uh, driving down uh, to uh, get to the campsite. I'm not to campsite to the uh, convention, convention center. I got my my boy Eric from Phoenix Nest, uh, and uh, we're we're out here trying to get these LEs today. Uh, he uh, he got his eight points yesterday for getting mats, so I'm I'm happy. I'm super happy. We got two other people. They need to get their qualifications. So yeah, uh, my battery's dead because I forgot to charge it. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get some more footage here soon. I also need to charge my battery. All right, it is uh, Battle Royales. I'm at the Star Trek booth or Star Trek Battle Royales. Um, we got a few amount of people, and uh, we're trying to do our best here. Hopefully, uh, we'll get some folks, not too many people. A lot of folks were here for uh, Avengers Infinity. It's uh, $16 for Avengers Infinity. Uh, I did a couple. Uh, now, I did a Harley, and then I did a, I'm now doing Star Trek. So, a little cheaper to do Star Trek. Some people playing Grinders. Um, good crowd overall so far. So, let's just uh, see how things go. Phoenix Nest. Uh, Day two super meal. Sorry, I probably uh, saw it once, but yeah. We have uh, Lucas has gotten a euro. I had a euro platter. Uh, PJ had a spicy euro. Uh, Kevin is, is not on Phoenix Nest, but he's like honorary sidekick. He gets to hang out with us. Uh, Mr. Lytle, all good. He got he got a burger. We were at a Greek place and he got a burger. What's up with that? Good. That's what's up with that. He said it's good. That's what's up with that. I should have done All right. So uh, we're breaking down the first day, having fun. There's Maddie G down there. And uh, yeah, uh, having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, we, We're having another dispute about vegetables. All right. Check y'all for uh, day two. All right. It is singles day. It is awesome here. They gave out raffles before. Uh, so and they gave out free stuff uh, with the raffles. So I felt that was really positive. I had an awesome game with Mr. Easton Brock here. Yeah, uh, well, I lost 170 to 175. I was on stream. Uh, so if you caught that on the WizKids stream, uh, then that's great. Uh, overall, uh, I am two and two. I have some teammates that are three and one, uh, but most of my team is two and two. Uh, I see Mr. Daniel Powell here. He's up on top table. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good uh, stuff going on. It seems that uh, this gentleman right here, Mr. Lane Miller, has been killing it. He has not left first table, it seems. So, yeah. Uh, overall, the judging staff has been really good. They've been really prompt. Uh, I think a lot of our concerns about nationals sort of gone away. We're doing six rounds, uh, so I still got some hero clicks to play. So everything's starting to pick back up. Uh, hopefully I get some more recordings in today. All right, it's top 16. My boy Matty G has made it in. Uh, he's going against Wolverine teams. Uh, I see one, two, one, two, three. So this gentleman's playing expert two. So one, two, three. Uh, I almost want to say, yeah. I see three Wolverine teams. I'm sorry, Wolverine X Men teams. Top eight. Uh, there's also Dan Powell with his well practiced. Unimind uh, Lockjaw group build with Pocket Tank. Uh, Lane Miller, I lost to him in round two. He is also playing uh, Lockjaw group uh, Unimind build. Uh, so we got uh, Isaac. Uh, Isaac is over there. He is. Uh, I don't know exactly which team is he, his are, but we can clearly see there's like a, wait, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting used to the zoom, so bear with me. There we go. We clearly see this is several multi-giant girl team with the Miss Marvel uh, Avengers team. So 
uh, definitely that's going to be interesting. Uh, Kenji is, again, sorry for messing with the Zoom. Uh, Kenji is over there. He has made uh, top 16 uh, for Pusheen. So, uh, again, when I made those predictions about, you know, great teams, sort of proved my point. Uh, so, uh, right now, team-wise, uh, we have two people from the Lexman. Uh, Click stall. I have two. Uh, Phoenix Nest has one. Pusheen has one, to my knowledge. I don't know if any other member is Pusheen. So, uh, yeah, we're sort of seeing some interesting representation from throughout the country. Uh, so, uh, we will, I will come back a little bit later uh, and uh, give an update. Again, so much Unimine with Daniel Powell. But just kidding. Yep, I'll come back in a little bit with an update. All right, uh, this is Saturday at World, oh well, World's Nats. It's team day. We got team shirts. Team shirts. Check out the fashion. Grade A fashion. So uh, from top to bottom, there we go. Tons of awesome. Turn around. Yeah. No, so, I was going to film your back. Oh, oh, yeah. The back is... <laughs> The back is cool. Here, you stand up, Matty G. You're a better model than I am. Bam! There it is. In the back. Uh, here's here's a pro tip. Pro tip, man. How you solve jersey disputes between teammates? You put quotation marks on one, and the other one just gets the plain number. That's how you solve jersey disputes. So they, yeah, there you go. Uh, we have uh, Team Failboat, uh, one of the awesome teams here. Uh, we also have uh, Clicks Off, Daniel Powell. He did really well last night, got fourth place. Uh, he made top, he lost top four. Uh, somewhere over there, I think I see Adam Friedman. That is Adam Friedman. There we go. Uh, not as creepy as I'm making it come out to be. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's a... There's a lot of good teams uh, here, as I am completely out of focus. There we go. We're, we're coming back in. And uh, so we're hoping to pull something awesome uh, so uh, we can do well. Uh, I think that overall, like, today's showing is just going to be fun. All right. So uh, that's it. Uh, I will. Oh, yeah. Uh, Isaac won. I think everybody on the Internet knows that now. Uh, and uh, I, I might end up talking about teams and things I learned from this event a little bit later. Yeah. All right. That's it. All right. I am. We are. We are doing pretty good uh, with our main Phoenix Nets team. Uh, I've, I've won three games. Lost one game. Lost my last game. It was uh, a rough uh, fight. Uh, I, it came down to me trying to kill a Colossal Retaliator and failing and then losing my uh, Ego Prime. And I know like y'all are going to be like, hey man, show your face. So, okay, cool. So, uh, pretty much I'm, I'm heading out to go eat. Um, there are some lessons learned that I, I have from Sealed. Uh, number one is, uh, buddy, them mixing up the boosters uh, changes uh, a lot of mechanics. Um, it doesn't make things like guaranteed uh, that you're going to get great or get bad or like or average out. So uh, we were fortunate to pull really well. Uh, the next thing I'll say is uh, a lot of teams are picking stuff up uh, for their uh, their main figures uh, and overlooking things just because they're not constructed meta. Uh, they're like, oh. Why would I ever play Lord Chaos? Like, uh, this, he has a place in, in Sealed, so, um, you know, you gotta sort of think out of the box a little bit. Uh, I've I also learned, you know, with uh, her and Kismet, you gotta be, you gotta be on point. You gotta make sure that you put that token away and make sure your opponent uh, doesn't just uh, KO it. Uh, real easily so uh, yeah a lot of tough games a lot of tough hard-fought people I played uh, shout out to uh, Tequila Mockingbird uh, Lexman Black 
Uh, I think Pusheen, Teamworks makes Pusheen work. And uh, I, I can't think of the other team right now. I'm a little tired. I need some food. So uh, that's it. I am, I'm happy. I'm, you know, I think we broke uh, one. Uh, I, yeah, we, we won a good chunk of games. And uh, I think we're going to make top cuts. So we'll see here in just a bit. Oh, uh, for last bit, just uh, see some cool stuff. If you come out here, come come to this market. This is like the best place to get food. It, it, you have healthy food. It's reasonable prices and good um, good sizes. So come out here to eat. Uh, North Market. All right. Uh, fortunately, we lost the top 16. Uh, there's some. It's pretty good. So I'm in the convention hall. So there's some cool games, cool cosplay, some interesting stuff. So I thought maybe I would be able to like show you all around, uh, show you what, well, a couple things I've seen. I mainly go for t-shirts, excuse me. I mainly go for t-shirts. Uh, I have a painted t-shirt uh, that's really, really good. Um, so I'm trying to see if that guy's here. Uh, I usually try to find a, uh, a funny uh, nerd shirt every time I go out. So, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, there's there's tons of uh, cool things. Uh, there's like here's some woodwork here. Uh, I guess these are made with lasers, laser woodwork. So it's like super fancy. And there's like corsets and all sorts of other stuff like that. So uh, yeah, uh, I am going to uh, try to find a cool shirt and then uh, after that uh, I might uh, show some more games if I can find them. Uh, well, more HeroClix games. So that's it. I will see you all in a bit. Okay, uh, this is the guy that I got. I got this wizard shirt a couple years ago. Uh, what, what's the name of their group? Uh, there we go. Art of uh, Ed Beard Jr. Yeah, it's like good stuff. So, like the shirt is like painted on. It feels really good. Uh, so, I, I know I said I was gonna probably show you all like more uh, gaming stuff, but uh, it, I, I'll, I'll pretty much probably gonna turn this on and off whenever I find something cool, so uh, yeah. When your game has something called Pot of Desires, and it looks like a drug dealer, you might be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Eh, anyway, that's it. Keep moving. Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I'm your host, Edward Shelton, aka Dark Logos. And this is the show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. Uh, today's show is going to be a little bit interesting because I'm going to recap Origins. Uh, I know <laughs> it's, it's going to be strange, like you actually watched uh, bits and pieces of my uh, origins adventure before I actually, you know, start and get into it. Uh, and I sort of did that on purpose, uh, mainly for you to actually see and get the feel of, of some of the things that I experienced uh, firsthand. So more of what I'm saying right now sort of, you know, sinks in. Uh, and... Uh, I know that might sound uh, weird, uh, considering normally I put the you know the video at the end, uh, but I, I really wanted to give everyone sort of that feel, the taste of origins uh, up front, and and so uh, I'm going to break down today's show into uh, my thoughts and feelings about Wizkid. Uh, and then start going into uh, my analysis from the game, and then uh, some other sort of like general uh, lessons that I've I've learned uh, from this uh, last weekend. And uh, what what I'm going to do is uh, I've actually had folks send me several different questions. Uh, so for episode 250, I'm just going to go over some of those questions and. Uh, pretty much just uh, 
for for lack of a better word, do like a like a hybrid AMA type thing, um, where uh, I, I answer some questions and, and go into some some thoughts. So uh, there you go. Uh, if you if you want to send me some more questions, uh, then feel free. You probably really have like maybe two or three days from when I put this up uh, before I you know start recording. Uh, for that, so uh, just let you know. All right, I feel like uh, when it comes to Wiz Kids, I feel like I've had to start over with Wiz Kids, and a pun isn't in, is intended. But the the main reason I say that is this year is different, and the main reason it's different is because it seems that our biggest problem with Wiz Kids is them trying to cram too much into too little time. Uh, a lot of the stress I felt was gone. A lot of the speed that rounds need to be at and actually the number of rounds that need to be there was there primarily because they weren't cramming, you know, three, you know, main acts in a sideshow in, into a, a two-act stadium, Okay. And because of that, things flowed better. You know, single still was late, but they're looking at that where you can just automatically have your build sheet, you know, pre-done and printed off uh, ahead of time. They're looking at that. Uh, they're, they're looking at, you know, making some of your interactions a, a bit better. Uh, and I appreciate that. Uh the big thing that I feel that they have done to make Hero Clicks better um, for the competitive players is they brought our own on. And I don't know how much, you know, I know Kenny works for WizKids now. Kenny Pena works for WizKids, which is a huge thing. I don't know how much, you know, Jay and a few others get to say uh, and how things are done or giving their feedback at the end of, of an event. But I I gotta say because I I feel like more people that understand competitive are there uh, and are sort of saying like maybe we shouldn't do this or we should do that. I I feel that that reality has has trickled down and it's it's trickled down into this tournament. Which I'm really glad about. Okay. Uh, when we look at singles, singles was a well run event. Uh, I don't really have any issue with Kenny judging or sort of facilitating over the final match. Uh, Abdul is on his team, and uh, Isaac is a person that he interacts with a lot. Okay, I don't envy him. Okay, I, I really don't envy him. Uh, having sort of this similar, you know, clash personally, you know, for me last year where it was like, you know, my boy Matty G in the finals and there's Howard, you know, my, my friend. So it's, uh, it, I, I feel for Kenny. I know in some side conversations with some people, they were like, should there be another judge? And, and there were other judges. So it wasn't him by himself. Uh, but other than that, there really wasn't any drama. And I really can't call Kenny judging at the final event drama. Uh, because, again, there are other judges. And if there was any, you know, conflict, he would yield to the other judges. So, uh, again, I, I look at that element being there. As a huge deal. I, I think the other thing that, that kicks in is when we go into teams. Teams was packed and teams was fun. Um, no one really felt like butthurt around teams. Yeah, if you had crappy pools, you had crappy pools. But it wasn't like, oh man, I have crappy pools. But guess what, dog? I hate teams. No one no one says that. Everybody was just like, oh, I got these crappy pools. Let's see what I could do. Okay? And, and 
even if you didn't do well or you know you didn't break you still had that moment of like yeah this is fun and in the midst of the the competition element sometimes the fun element gets gets lost you know what i mean and you try not to make it get lost and you do your best uh, to keep it in the forefront. And Teams allows you to keep it in the forefront um, because the amount of shenanigans is is greatly reduced in Teams in comparison uh, to singles, you know. So I feel having Teams on Saturday was a good idea. I feel that, you know, having, you know, the, the singles on Friday – was a really good idea, okay? You're able to get the most amount of people to compete in singles, uh, sorry, in teams, which is, in all honesty, way more profitable for the company uh, on a, a high, more highly uh, accessible day, and I think that that's completely fine. Uh, the raffle tickets uh, and getting random prizes, that was great, it continued on from last year, and I got to say that's a positive. Uh, being able to have this grand reveal of the uh, Batman animated series in a battle royale for a limited group of people that was great. Okay, uh, I didn't get to watch it because I was still in teams, but if if you were one of those people. How wonderful did it feel to do that? And, and the last time I felt like that uh, was, uh, I think it, they allowed uh, Galactic Guardians to be play for Battle Royales uh, a couple of years ago at Gen Con uh, before it came out. And it was like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. So, you know, even with the cons, um, you know, with the Bibles, the, the, the line wasn't ridiculous. If you if you wait it to like the second, third, or even you know fourth day, you just walk up and be like, "Yo, here's my money. This is what I want to buy at this number," and you could get it. And, and, and so, I feel it, it's like Wiz Kids got its groove back. Okay, it, it learned how to say like, "Look, man, we're we're here to throw a good party." That's that's our focus. This is this is probably going to be the biggest party. Uh, in, in terms of volume of the year. So let's throw a hella good party. Okay? Because they, they know. They know they're probably going to eat it a bit when it comes to Philly. And and I really mean eat it. Because, uh, buddy, I was looking at flights out. And it's like over six months out. And the plane ticket's $400. That's stupid. And, and that's with multiple stops. Okay? And I'm in, like, economy. So, there's there's a problem with that. But I'm not going to go into that. So, for throwing a better party, I have to say I was wrong being salty on, on Married with Clicks and Poo Poo and Wiz Kids. They, they allow for the grinders to be set up. And not only that, this is something that I actually... I wish that they put out there, and they didn't save this for some grand surprise. And I, I think the, the I, I think their whole "ta da" surprise thing is dumb. Like I, I don't like that. But they did they did several things that I thought was important. Number one, you have two days for grinders, so it gives you you know a, a couple of chances of of doing of getting in. And and trust me, not everybody got in. Okay, just making that clear. Not only that, uh, if you're on the top half of the mountain, sorry, if you're on the bottom half of the mountain uh, in teams or singles, you have four points going towards your entry into the world championship. If you're on the top side of the mountain, guess what? You are qualified for team worlds and team uh, uh, and singles. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's great. That's that's awesome. Okay, now I don't know how teams that's going to play out. 
And I may have just, you know, saw something that may, you know, I may be wrong on the team part. And that would be fine still. But to say, like, look, you uh, got, you know, top half of the cut. You get to you get a world's entry, not just first place. That's respectful. That's a res- that's respects the hustle. That respects the drive. It provides structure for us to look at and appreciate. Okay, and that's something that I wanted out of Wiz Kids. I wanted them to create a structure, and they respect our grind. I put in over a thousand hours a year on this game. Easily over a thousand hours a year on this game. To compete, to go out there, uh, to, to try to win tournaments, uh, try to get up on the WizKids boards and whatnot. And you know what? Finally, the freaking company recognizes it. Thank you. Thank you. So let's let's sort of transition um, into some elements that I've learned uh, about the game in its current state. And it's going to help you a little bit going into uh, states and uh, July WKOs. There are a list of elements which I feel stand out significantly to the point where they cannot be ignored. Uh, I'm gonna get stay. I'm gonna stay general at first, and then I'm gonna get more specific. Uh, number one is outwit, 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 outwit. Uh, multitudes of outwits is stupid. It just is. Uh, like just seeing it firsthand, uh, being able to have three outwits and one that can see through stealth of how eviscerating that can be. Uh, leadership. We are no longer in a three-figure meta. Like, we are in a four-figure-plus meta. And I'm, I'm going to unpack that later. But the, the big deal is, is that by having leadership, it allows you to get everything done that you need to get done in a turn. Uh, or, let me rephrase that, get a most of what you need to get done in a turn uh if you try to play most of the teams that i've seen that perform well uh without leadership you are going to utterly fail and fall on your face and and the main reason that's going to happen is that you won't have enough actions to call an id card have that id card do whatever it's supposed to do um get the the person that called the id card out of position uh, to make the ID card call and go poof, and then also do a follow-up attack. Or keep the ID card in and do two follow-up attacks. That is big. That is that is real big. Next thing is pogs. Pogs are broke, son. They, they are. Whether it's uh, Carnage pogs, whether it's group pogs, hell, even Ego Prime pogs in Sealed. Pogs is broke, son. Get get wrecked. Get wrecked by some pogs. Because they're the ability to multiply your force and keep additional game elements out there and going. And all you have to do is maintain a non-bystander figure. And you have an army uh, that you paid zero points for. That is a big deal. Now, at the same time, I will also say... Uh, I've won and lost games because either my opponent only had bystanders left or I only had bystanders left. And I did let my opponent know, like, yo, man, I lost. And they were like, what? You still got all these pogs? I'm like, look, no, the rules. If, if all I have is bystanders, then I, I lose. <laughs> you know? And the guy was like, oh, dude, thanks for telling me because I wouldn't have known otherwise. So, yeah, like, that is a catch-22 that you need to be aware of um, of, you know, where your, your permanent character's at and are you able to, you know, realistically keep them protected in that Pog army. Now, 
I I will say is uh, pogs. They're not all created equal, but they do uh, one thing exceptionally well, and that is tie up. Whether they attack or force your opponent to attack them, their pure existence at worst causes your opponent to generate one action to your one action ratio, which means that you always break even. You move a character, a pog up and base a character, that pog gets punched. Even if you don't have colossal retaliators, you have made a one-to-one action exchange. And that's the big thing. When we start doing our meta math and crunching them little invisible numbers and stuff, we can start to see that pogs generate a lot of value. Uh, Next up is probability control. I think... If you're trying to pretend that you can avoid probability control, you're a little bit delusional. While shredders do not have to like roll four attacks, one thing is, is clear that a majority of the rest of the team does. And having probability control is essential. If you don't have prob, at least one standard prob or enough theme probs to actually matter, Uh, you're going to be stuck uh, at a huge disadvantage. Now, I know some people are listening and they're probably going to say, but yo, Dark Logos, man, um, I'm I'm running, you know, X theme team and I have five theme probs and, you know, why why would I even think about a standard prob, man? I don't get it. And, And what I would come back and tell you is, Because your opponent will burn you out of those five theme probs with a quickness. With a quickness. And sit there with a lockjaw or some other figure and just sort... I wouldn't say laugh at you, but make it obvious that you're in a bad position. Okay? So... If, if you're thinking, eh, I, I don't need to really invest in prob, I have theme team prob, I really, 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 really want you to reconsider that thought. Because ugh, when, it's not a good idea when you have three to four Wolverines in your face and they have an 11 attack. It's, it's, it's just not a good thing. And oh, they have flurry and potentially all have a free attack. That's, that's not a good thing. So, uh, th- there's that. Uh, stat manipulation has always been a staple. But right now, the stat manipulation isn't really on, like, look at me, Kamehameha, you, uh, for eight damage. Uh, or throw, you know, hammer to the face or, you know, anything like that. Uh, but it is more of, hey, look, man, I'm shooting you from 12 away. Um, because of infinity and my Star Fox Perplex. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Uh, you can't prop me because I am literally shooting you with a sniper rifle from downtown with a magical bullet. Like in Wanted. That's, that's literally what you're dealing with. Okay? And because you're starting to deal with silly things like that, of huge spatial manipulation... The stat modification of damage does not matter as much as as much as range and movement. Those two stats matter way more than damage. And I know some of you be like, Dark Logos, you on that stuff, man. But realistically, start looking at your top uh, eight teams and even your top four teams. Uh, for nationals and you're going to notice that all of them have some level of stat manipulation in movement or range if you have a sam cap you're manipulating movement if you have a infinity you are manipulating your opponent's range and movement and increasing your range in movement there is a lot of stuff going on there. So I would definitely say if you're not used to playing against Infinity, get ready to know that chick because she's she is going to show up. She may not be the most dominant element in the meta, 
but Abdul made more people a believer than I think uh, would be a believer otherwise. Okay. Uh, next up is plus to map. Plus to map, I feel it matters. Uh, now, I know some of you might be saying, well, how much does it matter? And I, and I would come back and I say, it matters enough for me to bring it up. It matters enough for me to bring it up, but not only just for me to bring it up, for me to say, like, look, you need to have, if you're not running theme, you need to understand not just is the, not, not just that the map's going to screw you, but your opponent going first is going to screw you. And, and so unless you have some mechanic that's like, yo, make me go first or else it's going to suck, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to suck acid for you. Uh, then, yeah, you're, you're going to have some problems um, and it's going to be a lot more difficult ride uh, going through because there's too many scenarios when you start adding in terrain where teams can just be like, all right, I put figure X here. I have special terrain in these squares. I'm on this map. And guess what? I'm going to just hypersonic speed back and forth from this spot. And you can't really do much to me. You could try to colossal retaliate me, but uh, all I have to do is put up this free barrier and on this indoor map and you can't do anything to me. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that I face that personally, but with enough conversations, uh, I've heard similar things, okay, uh, of, of what people are trying to do or have done. So, to me, the reality that we're facing right now is getting map and going first matters more than any other time in the game. Um, probably, I take that back. It, it's it's as equal to the Ghost Rider meta, because whoever went first in the Ghost Rider meta usually won. Okay, uh, next up, Power Cosmic, Power Cosmic, Power Cosmic. Ooh, Power Cosmic. Uh, you almost think I'm trying to invoke Beetlejuice or something, but Power Cosmic is that other opposite end. Is the opposite end of Outwit. By having Power Cosmic, allowing your figures to, you know, keep going, not taking pushing damage, keeping pressure and tempo on maximizing your actions from, you know, your leadership, uh, and just cramming more and more and more and more, uh, like, vibrance and power into a team that otherwise would not have it. It's strong, uh, it's it's ridiculously strong. Now I know some of you would say, "Are you talking about Unimind?" And I'm like, "No, I'm not specifically talking about Unimind, but he is included." Okay, so whether it's Star Fox, uh, Cosmic Thor, sorry, Cosmic Star Fox, Cosmic Thor, Infinity, Eternity, uh, Unimind. It, not being able to outwit those characters matters. It really does matter. Okay, uh, let's let's sort of start breaking down some concepts uh, that I have uh, deduced uh, in in my my mild reflections uh, from this weekend or this past weekend. Uh, number one. Uh, Barrier is a 5 out of 10, not an 8 or 9 out of 10. And I know some people were like, what? what? That doesn't make sense. Hear me out. A lot of people speculated before Nats that, like, look, Barrier could potentially just be disruptive. And the main reason it can be disruptive is, is that we don't know really how strong it is uh, if, if we made a Barrier team. And we have Captain America principled. He just comes in. He waves his magical cosmic hands and force fields appear and there's eight squares of barrier. The problem that comes back with barrier as it is right now, it's not the, oh, look, here is the uh, Colossus ID card because that's really not an issue. 
Um, it's not the, hey, I have Cyclops so I can bust through a square blocking terrain. Because that's really not the issue. The issue comes in is that you have enough spammable pieces with three damage and you have enough actions on average that you are able to jailbreak anybody that you can you you're trying to contain or bust down the wall uh, to get to anybody that you're trying to attack. Pure brute force is the proper solution to barrier right now. You have a Colossal, it has 3 damage, it's just, it has an 8 range or a 7 range or whatever, or 4 range, it's just going to, you know, shoot. It's, it's that simple. So, yes, you are exchanging an action for an action. And, and normally, uh, I would say, like, yeah, that's not bad. And, and, and truthfully, it's not bad. But when we start saying, like, okay... In terms of where the game is going, and free attacks, and uh, several other things, uh, that's not good enough for where things are going. Now, I know some people would say, like, but Dark Logos, you were talking about Pogs earlier. Well, yes, let's let's look at compare uh, Barrier to Pogs, realistically. Okay, I, base, I spend an action to base your character uh, with a Pog. If that pog has plasticity, you have a choice. If you don't have plasticity, you can punch it or hope to roll a six. Now, punching it is easy. Okay, so you punch it. Boom, your guy has a token. My pog is dead. I spent no points on generating... Uh, sorry, for, I spent no points on the pog. When that pog dies, that character that attacked is where they're at. They didn't do anything to go punch anybody with clicks. Okay, and that's huge. That's real huge. Okay. Uh, now, whereas with Barrier, you know, you have a character just maneuvering wherever the heck they want. And then once they get there, they're like, oh, yeah, uh, I'm right here. I'm setting up the Empower. Bust this wall. Okay, Sidekick Slim. Go do Precision Strike Flurry for 8 damage. Yeah. So so that stuff like that happens. So barrier is still useful. It's just not as good as it was uh, a year ago, let alone a year and a half ago. It's okay. It still has a place. It's just not high up on the toolkit. Uh, we are going to encounter more sprawling battles than small skirmishes. And this is what I, I feel is going to be the issue. I had too many games where there's figures in the backfield on both ends, figures in the forefield on both sides, and figures in the midfield. Okay? And because of that, um, targets were all over the place. Uh, I, I definitely take my game against Easton Brock. I don't know if it's archived. I don't think it is. Uh, as a good example, he came at me, uh, wiped out a you know a good chunk of stuff, caused problems for me. I sort of started to try to rally with Jakeem. Actually, did a pretty good job rallying with Jakeem, um, and I may uh, I ended up creating a situation where I got up slightly, and then he proceeded to bring characters from the uh, back field into the four field uh try to do some position maneuvering and then had to bring them from the four field into the midfield and then eventually into my four field so uh you you start asking your, yourself the question okay with all that transitioning and movement and all those different characters going on did you really traverse a good chunk of the map and I would say I never really went far past midfield, but my opponent came all the way to my side of the board. And so going back to that, you know, stat manipulation and mobility, those things are starting to become a factor so that the map matters and the map is a whole area to express the battlefield versus this minute space where big hitter fights big hitter and they slug it out with hypersonic speed dips and, and drops and move around corners and stuff. 
I don't I don't think we're in that type of game anymore. Uh, and and that's in part due to I would say the low point uh, sub 25 points or less uh, metagame that we have going on between ID cards and Colossal Retaliators and micro supports. Um, all of those things kick in and give you enough figures that you're stuck saying like, uh, this guy stays back here, this guy stays back here, this Colossal Retaliator is my number one, uh, this other Colossal Retaliator is my number two, uh, or or Colossal Retaliator number one is for these scenarios, Colossal Retaliator number two is for these other scenarios. Uh, you know, I have this attacker, and then I'm going to move over here, and I'm going to do this, and I got these four ID cards, and they're for this, 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 and this. Okay? So I, I feel like it's going to be more sprawling. Definitely when you start adding in mo high mobility and high range. Those two factors are really what is taking the cake right now. All right. This is, I feel, is the grand um, point. And this is something for me as a team designer and, and just a person that's done this show for a long time that... I'm sort of excited to say at the same time, I don't know the implications long term of it. So let me drink this water real quick. All right. The average team is starting at four pieces. The average team is starting at four pieces. If you are not hitting four pieces, you are already behind. You are losing. Okay, now I know some of you are going to be listening to that and be like, hold up, wait, like you can't definitively just say that if I have three or less pieces, I am going to lose. No, I'm telling you, if you have three or less pieces, you are going to lose. Okay, the average team now starts at five figures. You just start at five figures. And, the, and, and I'll, let me just break it down from the Unimind Unimi perspective. Okay, you have Unimine, you have Lockjaw, you have Groot, that's three. You have the Tank, that's four. You have two Walking Wood, that's five and six. Oh, ho, oh, you're like, hold oh, on, wait, but those are Pogs. Yeah, and the Tank is a bystander too. Even if you sub the Tank and you take it out and you put a Floor Colossal in, you're still hitting the same math. You're still hitting the same math. And that's the frustrating part. Is that when you start factoring in Groot's impact on the game and X-Men's impact on the game and why they're showing up at the top tables, it's this. I can play very strong sub 75 point characters changing the whole golden ratio philosophy that I've promoted and has been like Newtonianly true for the game for years years okay we, we move from the golden ratio from 100 to 125 points going away and now the new golden ratio is 50 to 90 points. That's where we see over two-thirds of our call-ins come in. In those point ranges, we see a majority of our solid either support, like super supports, or uh, the beginning points of our main attackers for our force. They are coming in at that point range. They're coming in at that point range. And with a abundance of leadership, you have a f influx of characters that you're able to play in multiplicity, whether it's multiple Wolverines, multiple Cyclopses, multiple uh, Groots, multiple Flora Colossals. Uh, there's just a ton of stuff to spam. And when you have all of that together, you have a force multiplication where you're able to maximize four actions just about every turn until you get to the late part of the mid game where there's been enough pieces exchanged where you you might be down to 
four pieces or you might be down into three pieces but you have another piece that can still generate bystanders okay this is this is why it's it's an issue with an abundance of cheap leadership paired with cheap effective characters that can be combative and either have survivability like a la through range like cyclops uh or a la through just survivability either lockjaw or 50 point wolverine your your incentive or or even um uh what's her name ironheart your incentive to play these figures rise greatly when uh the game has a lot of characters that just deal insane amounts of damage and have good amount of mobility but are high points so you're able to combat them with not just like spam but just just imagine if you were able to take aged steak and then make it cheap that's that's what you're doing you're you're combating you know pf changs with magical steak meat okay yeah you either way you're going to be constipated but buddy it's it's going to be hell of an explosion when it comes down to it okay so having an understanding that you're in a game that's that's you have a minimum of four figures puts several different types of players in huge disadvantages uh number one if you are a control player you are at a huge disadvantage because it's hard to lock down five six characters unless you have an aura effect and most aura effects are not as big as they used to be and because of that you're looking at high amounts of liability if you're trying to lock down multiple figures and the only character that really has something similar to a high level control that's not an aura is a uh, rare professor x and not not brood x but the the normal version and even with him you're not getting any damage out of that you're just getting a positioning element uh, if you are a defensive player trying to protect that many figures is going to be a problem definitely when after i just said like look man barriers is is not what is is, is cracked up to be and you're going to be like but defend dark locos defend and then i'll come back and be like yo man it's easy to get a 13 14 attack so defend is is pointless um, unless you have something that can grant invincibility to adjacent characters without using somebody like prodigy uh yeah you you would need something like that to bring defense back right now we are in a high 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 gear aggro meta high gear aggro meta so with that having a high gear aggro high gear aggro meta that l allows us to have just tons of guys on the field, this is more like Shogun Total War than XCOM. Okay? If you don't get that, just, just imagine like armies fighting versus like military spats in an urban setting. Alright. Back to, to the analysis. So, um, there's a lot. There's a whole lot going down now. And so, whether it's your understanding of, like, looking at Tiger and maybe we're like, you know, maybe she doesn't suck. Maybe, you know, she, she doesn't suck knitting balls. You know, maybe she, she has a place. Um, or even going so far and looking at the giant girls and say, like, okay, well, I'm not going to play them all at 10, but uh, to deal with this Professor X meta, I'm going to have... Uh, you know, this one and this one, they're going to be at 30. Uh, this other one, I'm going to have a couple of 10 point fast forces ones, and then I'm going to build my, my Avengers team like so, and then I'm going to use Wasp Heart of the Avengers like this. Like, th those are the thoughts that we're going through right now, and that we start that we need to start having to process. And I, I know Avengers Swarm didn't show up. And I think Jay from the Meta Lab sort of touched on it on uh, on the last Meta Lab really well. Was that the problem with Avengers Swarm? In part, there's two problems. In part, number one is cost and accessibility, and getting all the giant girls. The, the number two 
biggest problem is, in all honesty, placement. Your puppeteering skills need to be on point. I got some good puppeteering skills. You can call me freaking Geppetto. Okay, that's that's the level of puppeteering that I'm at. All right, I got I got freaking game where it's like, man, this is so organic. It's like a real boy walking on the field and telling lies and drinking beer and then turning into a donkey and then just being a donkey to their opponent. There, there's a there's a there's another joke there somewhere, but I'm not gonna try to fish it out of the whale. Uh, but. If you cannot puppeteer, like you got the hands moving and the strings just get tied up in in the puppet, and and, and no, like you're, you're gonna have a problem. Okay, it needs to look, you know, more like Ultron, you know, less like uh, what was, what was that thing that came on on, on daytime cartoons where they had the rockets and crap and the, the puppets. You can see the fish line if you looked hard enough. Uh, Thunderbolts or something. Needs to look more like Ultron, less like Thunderbolts, okay? All right. Uh, Next up, I I, I really could just do a whole episode on on this, uh, but I'm I'm not. Uh, And and I really could just waste another 20 minutes talking about this, but I, I, I do think this, this is something that for community we need to talk about. Because if we fail to talk about this, uh, there is going to be great, huge leaps in logic that are going to come in and that people are going to not understand. And in part, I'm not saying Unimind's dead because of it, but it's because of this Unimind can be challenged. And that's that's really important. Because you have to think of Unimind as three Wolverines and some ID cards. Or three Wolverines in an X student or yeah three or better yet three Wolverines and three faculty ID cards and three student ID cards then it starts to like oh this makes sense now Dark Logos isn't on that stuff alright uh, here we go my next point is now is the time to emphasize the word play in playtesting I look at my personal failings at Nats this year and I look at some things that I wanted to have go down organizationally in Phoenix Nest and I can say this not taking time to just joke around and play a build is the most costly thing for us in this tournament to make the assumption that all the analysis or analysts and, and, and pretty much general conversations going on right now is sufficient is foolish am I degrading you know Scott or Dan or PJ or, or Jay Solomon uh, or or any other number of, of casters out there that are giving their opinions, you know, Aaron can too. No, I'm not. But what I am saying is this. The scope of view being presented is, is really about 25 to 40% of the game. <clears throat> now, I know some of you would be like, that's really good, but I'm like, no, it's not. There's too many elements that can catch you sideways. There's too many small details that can cost you games, cost you a lot of games um, if you are not aware of them. Um, little tweaks and things that you need to be aware of. We could we could say like, look, this is S class meta, A plus meta, B meta all day. But here's the thing, if you don't know what C and D is and why it does what it does, all of a sudden the flunky comes and steals your lunch. 
not only that, being able to come back and say, like, all right, well, we said this sucks. Let's play around with it and let's see what we can do with it. And my prime example of that is Abdul's Unseen. Some of my teammates said it sucked. I thought it was pretty interesting. <coughs> I don't know why my throat's like drying out. I didn't fully see all of its potential. Uh, but Abdul made a prediction, and the prediction was too many of the Colossal Retaliators are just that good. Being able to thwart a, a Colossal Retaliation because the majority of them won't have that character within prob range is essential. Uh, being able to say, hey, you have a minus two to your Colossal Retaliation. Uh, you know, makes Sutter a 10. And the average defense is somewhere around 18 and 19. That is not a favorable exchange. Now note, when he goes back and punches that Colossal, or shoots another Colossal, his attack value goes back up. But it's still something else to consider is that you have potentially lost your Colossal Retaliation because, you know, Carnage is now a 9 hitting an 18 instead of 11 hitting an 18. Uh, you know, same with Groot. Groot's an 11 hitting a, a 18, and you know, but normally, but now he's a 9 hitting an 18. And if you're dumb enough to put him on a Guardians of the Galaxy team, you know, he's an 8 hitting an 18. Or it's 8 hitting a 17. There's huge implications in that. Uh, being able to outwit through stealth. Take away your opponent's stealth. Stack that with other outwitters. To completely strip down an opponent. Is also a big deal. Um, and then some people say like, oh look, you know, Unseen, he can't attack. Oh, yeah, but also look at his point value. He can summon in a lot of X-Men. And not just weak X-Men, but very threatening X-Men. And he can be on a cosmic team. So, so when we start looking back at it, if I had taken some time maybe just play around with Unseen, force myself to say, like, all right, well... <clears throat> Couple of couple of us have said Unseen isn't that good. Let's see what we can do with him. Okay, he doesn't work like Sam Cap. You know, he has uh, this smoke cloud that I could sort of use to tie things up. All right, he has an outwitting prop. He sees through characters. He sees through elevation. He sees through hindering. Okay, how, what type of maps really are good with him? Okay, Genosha is really good with him because if majority of my opponent's figures are non-flyers, and can't ignore elevation, it's going to take a while for them to get to him. And then he has phasing, so I could just bump him from elevation to elevation, making him almost untouchable. Now, it's easy to say, like, look, Abdul lost uh, in uh, the finals, and not only that, Abdul had lost some games in uh, preliminaries. And it's true. I think he he was like the, the last to break for top 16, being 4-2. But still, there are some lessons to be learned because he disrupted some other teams, and he was able to say, uh, "No, nah, man, you're you're not you're not doing that," and that and it matters. Uh, it, it matters. Now, could he have uh, been in a? Uh, what would have happened if Daniel Powell had noticed? Uh, you know, the Leslie Evans pog and all the other stuff, and could he have won? And that that could be, you know, something for you to think about as well. But still, the argument can be like, yo, man, Abdul made top four using Unseen. Okay? And so I, I think we are easily to cast stuff out. Maybe it's time for us to start playing around with it, with stuff again. Maybe it's time for us to say, like, look, Okay, this is my initial pick of where things sit. I'm going to play around with things, have a little fun, see how things go. Uh, and and if, if I find something cool, I, I, okay, I do. If not, all right, I, at least I joked around and I tried. And I think a lot of players will get on the discussions boards with, with Facebook and start talking, and they'll just parrot what what whoever they like or agree with said and not think things through 
and then it, it just turns into the scuttlebutt that's constantly eaten by everybody, and it's it's Ouroboros becomes us type situation, and that's a problem because people that are, aren't in the loop have the ability to disrupt. Uh, and so with being able to play Roll20, <clears throat> there's no reason for you just to not have teams to just be like, eh, I want to play this. So it's it's something to think about. It's frustrating. I know it's like, well, that's just more time. And and I get it. I get it. We're not, we don't have infinite time uh, in our existence of as, as humans. And, you know, you get to pick and choose what's important. Um, but... I, I do think, you know, even if it's like a fast 30-minute game where you're just like, well, let's let's see how the first eight turns go. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, cool. Well, you know, it's not that amazing. I don't want to tr- keep playing this. Or, you know what? This is going better than I thought. Let's let's keep going. So that's that's there. All right. Um, so this next little last bit is... Uh, more of my personal reflections of uh, and, and takeaways, just more dealing with myself from the event. Uh, <clears throat> I realize I've become a man with secrets trying not to be a man of lies. And I, I've touched on this in the past, but I'm, I'm probably going to lay it more plain now. It's tough um, to have that teacher part of me hold back stuff because the coach part of me exists. Years ago, before teams were really a thing, and I knew some some famous players, I knew there were pieces of tech that I couldn't talk about because it was theirs. But there were tons of concepts and ideas that I, I just loved throwing out there, hoping, you know, maybe someone validated uh, my viewpoint uh that that character is good enough to be on the world stage and break and perform well. I used to like do lists of like 75 something characters that I felt were potentially good for worlds or nationals or whatever. And what I found out <clears throat> was like three fourths of the characters that I mentioned didn't show up and the obvious few that I did mention that everybody sort of talked about did show up. Fast forward to the current state of the show. I have people in my team that appear on Heroclix Media uh, or are Heroclix Media. And I, I look at it and I'm like, wow. We talk about some things and then they didn't say, they said this, but they didn't mention you know, the other thing that PJ said, who good, they didn't talk about that. They didn't talk about this other thing that I said. Okay, great. So people get an understanding of what's going on. They don't get the total nuance of it unless they really sort of read the runes real well and, and you know, throw the chicken bones right. Okay, great. But there's this great temptation when you're struggling to just lie. Just this. I'm not going to front. And I'm not going to even try to cast shade on any other caster. And I'm not going to say any other caster is doing this. Because that would... This is my reflection. There's there's a real good motivation. Definitely after a loss. And not hitting the benchmarks that you personally want in life. To just knowing you have an audience and enough people to trust you. To just lie. And so it's it's sort of a temptation to come up, um, and, and it's it's a hard thing to admit. And there's been times where I was like, "Yo, man, I really need this this win. I really need this win." Can I say that this figure is good? <laughs> Maybe some people will believe me. And sort of resisting that situation has uh, has been the grand struggle. Like, how much do I put out being helpful but further hurts my own team 
and how much do I obfuscate to protect, you know, sort of trade secrets within my team versus just spilling out mistruths so that I can keep a higher level of obfuscation up. So <clears throat> that's that, that's something that I've noticed. Uh, I'm not again. I'm not saying any other podcaster <clears throat> is struggling with this. Okay, it's just something I noticed. Um, the next thing I noticed is leading the fourth and fifth waves uh, of competitive players. Um, they have vastly different needs than players of the past. Uh, mainly of which is collection sharing, uh, getting intel, accountability. Um, what a, what did I write here? Uh, mentoring time and uh, patience for all parties. And and I, I know it's like, what do you mean, like fourth and fifth wave? So if you if you look at people that played in at start, I, I would say they're the first wave, uh, and then I could say all the way up until WizKids like talked about requ- retirement. That's like the second wave because it, it took a while before they started talking about retirement. And during this period of time, I know it sounds weird between the second and third wave. A couple of years, like most people sort of just hung around because um, we didn't really have a ton of reap repaints and repeats but uh, we did have like people just wondering like oh when this when is this character going to come out <gasps> you know that sort of thing um, I, I would say the second wave of, of hero clicks ends uh, right when feats hit uh, you, you have the people you know when they start it then you have people who's like, alright, this game is looks sort of cool. It has high collector value. Why is this rogue worth $50? In the back of the Wizard World, Wizard Magazine. Okay, yeah, because yeah, there was stuff like that. There used to be a price of hero clicks in the back of the Wizard Magazine. Okay, that's that's where this game used to be at. Alright. Um Then you have the third I, I would I would argue is um uh, the third wave really is from special powers all the way up into the ending of the game. And fourth wave is when new whiz kids, <coughs> excuse me, sort of took over uh, up to about War of Light. And then the fifth wave is from War of Light forward. Uh, and, and I know that's these are like big gaps of time, but <clears throat> the, the culture of the game is different from each wave. And if you were competing in really like waves one, two, and three, the amount of practice time and information that you needed was a thousand times less. It just was. And because it was like a thousand times less, you you could build your team a month out. And I remember reading so many articles of Wizard World Champions or National Champions, or because we really didn't have World Champions. <clears throat> and I remember specifically saying, like, I tested this out. And I thought it did good. And so I played my local guys. They threw some some tough teams at me. And I, I made some changes. And then I practiced for like two weeks. And then uh, when I went up there, I felt like I was doing good. And I, and, and I remember people like, oh, man, he practiced for two weeks. That's a lot. I remember one interview where a guy said, I practice every day for a month. And that guy's work ethic stuck with me and made me kept questioning myself, like, man, did I put enough time in? Did I practice every day? Did I think about my team every day like that guy did? Like, he got those results, you know, am, am, am I not hitting 
the levels that I'm hit I want to hit cuz I'm not practicing every day like that guy did when he got his title but now you need to have information information and teams being built constantly you're watching results constantly you're you're theory checking constantly you're looking at the the implications of one map over another the scenarios of bringing in a character versus not bringing in the character, uh, point by point value of a character. You're looking at the statistical average of a character's attack, defense, and damage versus somebody, another figure at similar rarity, at similar cost. You're, you're doing more math and more calculations then I think it took for us to get into space. And because of that, it makes everything a lot more difficult. <clears throat> and, it, and I can easily see how people would feel that they put a lot of effort in and got nothing back. I can clearly see that. Being able to have a, a, a network, being able to get information, being able to have somebody to mentor you, having a, a, a situation where like maybe not holding your hand, but somebody to, to like just tell you like, yo, man, your biggest problem is this. I see it clearly. Let's let's set up an action plan to solve that problem. And most as a, most time as an adult, so you hear action plan, you keep thinking, I hate my job, I hate my job, I hate my job, okay? But when you have somebody that you know cares about your well-being just as much as theirs, and they say action plan, you get excited. You get excited because you are looking at the development and the enrichment of yourself for the title of your team that you wear on the front of your shirt. It matters. It matters. And I look at players struggle. I look at players struggle. I looked at a team that will go unnamed and this guy is playing against a player that will also go unnamed because the moment I mention this, everybody will know who I'm talking about. And he's playing. And he's, he's playing the game of his life. But he short clicks. He didn't think anybody noticed. And he thought, maybe if I short click here, it'll allow me to get over. And the game progresses. And one person notices, and another person notices, but the player that he's playing is that good that him short clicking didn't matter. That little shortcut that he used to get over weak people didn't matter. He didn't have somebody to tell him like, yo, your character matters. He didn't have somebody to tell him like, look, that piddly stuff that works on the lemmings don't work on dragons. Sure the heck don't work on legendary creatures. And that's what you're facing. You're a man facing a legendary creature in combat. And you think you can get over him with some little tricks. And that guy lost and he sat there stunned. Phased. For minutes. Sweating. Wondering what the hell just happened. He needs somebody to give him some mentoring. He, he's a guy that needed some guidance before he even got there. He needed somebody to just check him and look like, yes, you're a grown man, but look, understand that you're going to go this far and this wide with the mindset you have. And it's not some sort of cosmic justice that came in. It's just the fact that you got to this table but you're really not that good yet. You need somebody to be accountable to. You need somebody that knows more than you to help you. And because of your actions, you could have reached out across the table and made a friend that could have elevated you 
But now that won't happen because of your character. And I told one of my players, like, look, just don't be that dude. Don't be that dude. Because now that guy got a ghost. A ghost of a game that he wished he could have won. A ghost of a woulda, coulda, shoulda. If I, if I got over that one thing, what if I learned? What if I put out that other little trick? What if I did that? What if I did this? I may have been able to make it all the way. And that is killer for a player. That will crush a player. And I've had to live through several ghosts. So I know firsthand of how many of those little ghosts can stop you from going to that next level. Oh, shoot. Man, you're a black player. You got to represent all the black players. Man, ghost had to kill that. Oh, look, man, your boy died. You got you got to raise the team up. You got to come in guns blazing or else they'll think you're for nothing. Got to kill that ghost. Oh man, your dark logos. You don't really have any constructed tournament wins. Everybody thinks you're a freaking joke. Had to kill that ghost. Punch that one in the throat. There's so many ghosts. Hell, Goku was one of mine until I beat him. They can ruin a player. But if you don't have somebody willing to walk there with you, somebody have patience with you, someone is so into you, but you also so into them, They're, the needs of the playership has changed. There is no ignoring it now. There's no way of ignoring it now. If you didn't see the amount of team shirts multiply from last year to this year, if you didn't notice that, you're blind or you're oblivious to the fact. The era of teams is solidified here and everybody else is on a rough road if you're not in one. And I don't like saying that, but it's true. And I don't think WizKids understands that fully, the full implications of that. And in part, due to high-level play requiring a multitude of expensive figures, teams are inevitable. Teams are inevitable. I'm not using Wolverine. You need five Wolverines. Let's talk to the local venue. We can get three more Wolverines. So we got four Wolverines. All right, we're going to adapt the build. We're going to put a Cyclops in. Or we're going to do double Lila Lila Cheney. Okay, cool. We couldn't do exactly five. But, yo, we we were able to do this. We put a Moya McTaggart in. All right, cool. How are we going to change it? We're going to do this, this instead of that. Okay, great. Do you have a boxing ring? No, man, I ain't got a boxing ring. Talk to Jerome. He has a boxing ring. Okay, cool. I got the boxing ring from Jerome. So I got four Wolverines, uh, a Moria, two, a Moria McTaggart, two Moria McTaggarts, uh, and, and maybe a Cyclops and a little Chaney in a boxing ring and some IDs. Boom. That's not even a legal bill, but okay, we're just going to go with it. I got Unimine. I need a Star Fox, so I didn't pull a Star Fox. Okay, well, I need a Thanos. I didn't pull a Thanos. Oh, Jim has a Thanos? Okay, great. I'm going to get a Thanos from Jim. I'm going to go talk to Austin. He's going to hook me up with a Star Fox. Uh, I got a Macari over here. Uh, now I need to find a Lockjaw. Man, you know, I'm, I, I can't get a Lockjaw. What's going on? I'm like, well, we're going we gonna to redo the build. I'm going to put a Star Fox on the field. Then I'm going to put uh, Cersei over there. And, yeah, there we go. You, the amount of figures that I've mailed out and have received for vids and borrowed that's easily within this last year is like a thousand dollars worth of figures. Easily. Now, unless you're Warren Buffett and can wipe your butt with million dollar bills, that's not that's not good. 
That's not really good for uh, an exceptional individual trying to compete. Because you're going to have to beg to your venue. And if you're not on good terms with your venue, good luck. You're going to eBay. And eBay prices are very unforgiving during tournament season. Very unforgiving. And don't let something win two weeks out before you need to buy it. You know, oh, I'll get that next payday. I'll get it next payday. Oh, oh, what, wait, what? Did did PJ Bowling just win with a Superman I was going to buy? Oh, crap. Price went up 35%. Oh, man. I got to decide if I'm going to, you know, eat dinner now or buy this hero click. Real talk. Real talk. You, there's so many things that it comes down to, like just sharing that you need. No one's immune. No one's above it. Folks used to make fun of Adam Friedman saying he didn't own any hero clicks. Yeah, he won all these tournaments. But now folks start to understand he was just the smart one. He was the smart one. He realized, like, shoot, why am I owning most of this stuff when I can borrow it? I don't need to own all of it. I just need to be able to get to it. I just need to be able to play it. That's it. And that's a huge deal. And, I I mean, the last thing I'm going to sort of throw out there when it comes to accountability is accountability of the leadership to the players, but it's also accountability of the leadership to look at the players and look at their character and be like, no, you're not doing that. Like go, there there are events that I know of firsthand of people wearing shirts cheating, flat cheating. Not gonna call anybody out. It's not worth it. But I know about it, and it's obvious that the leadership should know about it too. If I know about it, and I wasn't even there. Yet, I still hear reports about similar individuals doing similar things. And no one's going to say, like, yo, maybe you need to go check that person. Have a conversation with them about their character and how that reflects back on your organization. Maybe you need to do that. And I've had I've had to deal with people that I would want to pick up as players who had some questionable things go down in their character. And I'm like, ooh, good thing I didn't pick those people up. Because they did this, or they they went tilt this way, and they said these things that they shouldn't have said. They cheated here. And they knew and knew in multiple times through multiple games. So like I said, like the needs of the players have changed. If folks don't wake up to that, I you, it's it's over. Like four point, and I'll and I'll wrap this up with this. Four points got another title. Four points got another title, and I'm not sad about that. I wish, you know, Matty G got in the uh, top four, so I was sort of happy about that. And he lost to Isaac in top four. The thing that I am looking at now with four points getting another title is this. A father and son and Scott are out hustling all of us. Let that sink in. A father and son in Scott are out hustling all of us. Look at most of the tournaments, look at most of the titles in the last three years. Most of them are owned by four points. If it's not a wake-up call that most folks are slack-a-lacking, 
It should be the fact that a father and son and Scott have more titles, more representation, more domination than the rest of us. And maybe that's just enough to get some people motivated. But hey, they have accountability with, between one another. They share figures with one another. They mentor one another. They sow into each other. Maybe I have, maybe I'm catching on to something. They play games and try stuff out, have fun with it, look at new stuff. Maybe I'm catching on to something. All right, that's it for today's show. I'd like to thank you all for listening and uh, watching the video ahead of time. I know it's a little bit longer show. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at StartOverPod. It came, 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 came from outer space and told me, man, oh man, I need to wear my Black Panther talons more often. The chicas come out for the talons, baby. Had tons of people ask me about the talons. So, uh, yeah, I need to, gotta, gotta, cop, gotta be rocking the talons when I go out to the club. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at StarverPod. Follow me there is better than ringing the bell because you just go over to Twitter and be like, oh, Dark Logos put out a show because, you know, t YouTube doesn't screw me over on Twitter. So, yeah, because uh, if you could push the bell and all this other stuff, then you may not get my uh, show when it comes out. So that part sucks. So putting the like and, you know, pushing the subscribe button and all the other jazz, it's just YouTube silliness. So, yeah, follow me on Twitter. That's that's going to be the big deal. Follow me on Twitter. You can email me at startingoverpodcast at, uh, starting at gmail.com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com if you wish to opine. Keep it piffy. Keep it interesting. Keep it uh, 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 awesome, baby. Uh, let me know what you thought about Origins. Uh, if you saw me on stream, just, just send me an email. Be like, yo, man, I saw you on stream and I was rooting for you. Uh, I, I would appreciate that. Uh, and uh, you can uh, donate to the show by going over to startingoverpodcast.blogspot.com. In the midst of the graveyard of my hero clicks writing dreams, you will find a donate button. Uh, everything that you donate will go towards making this show better. Uh, last but not least, if you also want to support the show, we have the Starting Over Podcast t-shirt so you can wear my face on your chest everywhere you go and represent yeah like you could just explain to your parents that yeah there's a, I a random black guy's face uh, on my shirt uh, to prove that I'm not racist don't don't say that don't 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 say that uh, but yeah uh, hopefully uh, if you are listening to this I'm going to be on shots fired podcast and then if you didn't check me out on uh, I think the Metal Lab before Origins. You can go back and see how wrong or right I was, or how salty I was on the Metal Lab. Uh, I I did uh, talk to a couple people at Origins. They were feeling me uh, with with me popping off, uh, but uh, hopefully I, I've put some things into perspective uh, about how I feel now. So uh, again, Wiz Kids, if, if you're listening. Maybe we can start over. Um, you know, I know it's not going to be you know on the number line like like three or four. Maybe we can start around point five. Point five. We're still positive, close to neutral, but but positive. Okay, is that fair, Wiz Kids? Let's 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 go there. All right. I'd like to thank you all for uh, listening. And remember, 